introduction, but as you said, let me introduce myself. As you said, my full name is um, Dr. Jo Engineer John Mativo. Uh, I finished my bachelor's degree in civil engineering in the University of Nairobi that's 30 years ago. Uh, academically, I also did my master's degree in engineering. Uh, I finished in uh, 1999. I was in Shanghai in China. And I finished my PhD in 2007 in Tokyo Metropolitan University in Japan. Uh, I've worked with uh, both private and public sector. I worked with HP Gov, uh, that was my first employer. Then I went to the public sector. I worked with Ministry of uh, Roads and Public Works. Uh, then later, uh, I moved to as a consultant to a rural poverty reduction program, which was EU funded as a consultant. Then in 2010 is when I joined uh, Ketraco, that's a Kenya electricity transmission company, uh, as the head of technical, and that's where I've been working for, for the last uh, 10 years. So that's briefly my academic and my work, literally what I've been doing. Otherwise, I have other roles outside of both uh, engineering and my work. I've been, a university council, I've been part of the University Council in JQuad for four years, just finished early next last year. I've uh, served also as a, a chair of the a board of trustees in my church, Baptist Baptist Church. I serve currently as a moderator, uh, responsible for things to do with institutional development, policies, and excellent service delivery. I also sit in the board of what we call the three E's experience, where we're looking in terms of improving the welfare of people around the Masebara area, uh, both giving them clean energy, empowering them, and basically bring education and giving them an opportunity to target more. So that's briefly who I am, and that's what you do, I do. Jiria. Yes. Hello, I'm yes. here. Yes, yes, yes. You okay, I got right. That was my introduction. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have something to share with us on uh, maybe slide or something? No, no, no. Mine was I said basically I'll be taking you through some of the key things that I want for to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, take questions. I'll keep it quite general uh, so that we can have more interaction. I'm sure you have other panelists who will be taking both through the reports. I just wanted to give some of the basic things. But just a few things before we start. Just a disclaimer that mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't sit in the board of EBK. I'm not a council member of IK. So I, I cannot, I'm not claiming that I speak, uh, I'm authorized to speak on their behalf. So today's discussion and, and the guidelines I'll be giving are basically based on my personal experience. Yes, yes, I understand. Mentally. I understand it, yeah. Yeah, I've been mentoring, so it's based on my experience of mentoring a number of graduate engineers in my life period since I became an engineer. Uh, I've also sat in the panel of uh, interviews so for corporate membership panel for civil engineers, so also based on that experience that I've had as a panelist. And also the interaction I've spent with uh, consultants from uh, other countries like Malaysia, UK, and basically other Commonwealth countries as we work together, just finding out how they do their stuff and what we're doing differently. So that's what my whole thing, my discussion and my guidelines are based on. So okay. I just wanted to start with that one so that we're together. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so what I wanted to speak today is, is to show everybody, or at least to stress to everybody, if you remember one thing at the end of this conversation is that the whole thing is a journey from the time you graduate all the way to when you get a, a, either registers of a, as a professional engineer or you become a corporate member is, is actually a journey. It's not a one term event, it's an interview, but it's a whole journey. And the whole interview, if I start from the interview coming backwards, uh, the interview, remember, is, is primarily to, is intended for the graduate engineer to show that they have achieved a number of things. So the graduate engineer, when you come to an interview, is supposed to show that you have the desired level of experience. So you must, that's something that you have to demonstrate in your documentation and what you say. Uh, the engineer, secondly, is supposed to, when, as a panelist, you're looking in terms of whether the person has maturity of judgment. So that's what we need to see from you, from both the documents and from the person, the graduate engineer appears before that. Then we see whether they have, they have actually got their professional competence as an engineer. Then at the end, we have to make a judgment call whether this person can be can safely 
assume the responsibility of an engineer. So that's what we're looking at in terms of somebody has met all the desired experience, he can is a maturity of judgment, is competent, and he can assume full responsibility. So both your report and interview and later the SC give the panelists a good picture of what you're going to, whether you're going to be able to meet that threshold to be able to be either a corporate member or a registered engineer. So people should know that their document is going to be key in terms of the decision that the panelists are going to make. One of the things that, let me start with the report and the role interview. Remember, the report is there to give uh, the panelists an opinion of whether you've acquired the experience. So uh, what you put in the document is really, really important and is your chance to put your best foot forward and show the panelists that you have, the, you have actually acquired the experience that meets the threshold to become a registered engineer. Then again, you have to, the, the panelist is looking for, to see whether you have acquired the ability to make sound judgment. So that's why your report is key to everything that you're doing. If you do a, a, a general a document or you don't do a document that meets the, the level or you don't prepare yourself for the interview, definitely you have to, it, the, the panelists will find a dif difficulty to know whether you've actually met the desired experience and you can actually make independent decisions that are responsible. The essay comes later in the afternoon, and the essay is just for, the pan for you to give the panelists an opinion that you have acquired knowledge and ability to express your thoughts in writing. That's one of the things that we have to measure the engineers. Engineers are definitely required to write reports, and we're able to give you a question to see that you actually think through your, the whole process and actually document uh, your, your, your opinion in writing in a concise way that makes sense as an engineer. So that, those are some of the things that we are looking for. In, in the interview. Now, uh, since the report, and I keep on telling people here, one of the things is that panelists don't have set questions for, for each and every person who is coming there. The questions we get, we're getting from your document. So the better your document is, the more uh, precise your document is, the easier it makes for the panelists to ask you questions just to confirm that you have the desired experience, you can make judgment calls. So, in other words, what you're doing is that you are more or less setting your marking scheme and giving them a chance to ask you questions from the document to confirm on who you are. And this one thing I want to stress in the report, and it's also in the guideline, is that your experience in that goes to expel the part one should never be just merely uh, periodical or routine activities. You know, I see people in the report writing, I was involved with the Mombasa, Mombasa Nairobi, let's say, transmission line. And the guy writes that he's only involved in site inspections, site meetings, general, very extremely general terms. And these things don't give the panelists a chance to know what you're capable of. So somebody has to go beyond those statements and start including activities which demonstrate engineering proficiency and competence. Let me give you an example. It's always good to show that you understand what the planning is, to understand what was the, what was the need of the client and what are the engineering solutions. Whether the client is private sector, or public sector. One of the things that you have to put in your report, and this is what I keep on encouraging the, the grad engineers who, who have, have mentored here. In your project, it's very clear you have to identify this project is being put for a specific purpose, and the engineering solution that I think for is going to be this one here. Then again, things like giving examples of troubleshooting, site situation problem solving. So it's not just that I went to site, but you actually troubleshoot those term troubleshooting, you're actually giving solutions to something. So you go beyond just writing that I was doing site investigation or something like that. Then being able to clarify design uncertainty and propose alternative design. So I'm saying go beyond saying that I just did design. Your voice is gone, engineer. Uh, soil investigation, issues about project planning, the whole thing. Then I always also encourage my grad engineers to also get into non-engineering issues. Uh, for example, if some of us work very closely with environmental experts, social experts, and I know our engineers get involved in that. There's, so don't limit yourself just saying that I designed, I supervised. You have to go more and more because that gives an indication that you actually, as an engineer, you're able to make, you're able first to manage a place, you're able to for think in terms of what you're supposed to do, you're able to plan, and you're able to make decisions that will make the project get finished. So anything in your project that can affect time, cost, and scope, 
anything that can affect time scope and because every project there are always challenges that can affect the time period the time duration for the project the things that will come and challenge whether the project will go and finish on scope there are things that will challenge whether the project will get finished within scope both quality and quantity so you as an engineer what have you done what is this experience that you did what did you uh, demonstrate that the project will get finished within time scope and cost so, again secondly in terms of how you track in engineer just a minute just a minute Geoff Geoffrey, please unmute your mic i can't you your settings are disturbing us from this side i can't mute you Job, okay. Godfrey. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Engineer, continue. I continue. So, what I was saying is that for every project, every example you give, irrespective of whether it's here, yeah, I'm saying it's civil, whatever you're doing, every project always has challenges that can affect the time of completion, that's the duration, can affect the cost of project, mm -hmm. and can affect the scope of work. Every project has to come there. So when you describe how you get involved as an engineer, it's very important that you demonstrate what you did in place to ensure that the client needs a project that gets finished within time, if not earlier, or what you did to ensure that the project gets finished within cost or scope, because the, all these challenges will come on board. So it's always good for you to show how you tracked uh, these issues, because if you don't monitor them, therefore a project can go off scope so that adds value and makes will make sure that our panelist knows that this person i'm talking to knows exactly what it means to run the project then again for most projects i always say since you plan the project to meet a certain need of the client it's always good to evaluate whether this project actually met the the the, the intended purpose so just showing the full package of project whether i put a transmission line uh, its purpose is to take power to Namu, for example. Then are people now having power in Namu? What are they doing about it or something like that? Besides the, the construction or the design are part of it. So these are things that your report, then your experience should basically come out very strong in terms of what you've done, irrespective of what engineering your issue you're doing. The other thing just to mention, and this I read from the guidelines from, from IK, is the report shall avoid any semblance of a mere inventory of works prepared and suited. Now, that's the third thing, is that people end up writing, uh, describing their work or describing their, their summary of, of work. It's just like they're giving an inventory of things that have done. And the, the document is very clear that you should show the precise position that you held, what are the tasks you executed, what was the degree of responsibility that you had, and most important, what are the special problems that you met and which are the mitigations you gave? And this, I can assure you, is what most of us panelists look at. Okay, first I see you have said, oh, I did this project here, then we go to water in the foundation. That's my question I ask you the, from your report. How did you handle this? Why didn't you do this? Or you don't saw something. So these special things, you can set your own, you can actually put your best foot forward by writing uh, things that you know very well the panelists will be interested in finding out did you do them and do you understand the basics of doing this one here so the better the report is the more you actually impress the panelists and you make things easier and just confirm that actually what you wrote was was much better now one of the weaknesses and i call this weakness number one that i've seen is that most of the graduate engineers submit documents that are hurriedly compiled reports and most of them, generally speaking, that I've returned actually four of so for the last one year, is that they are very general and lack depth of information. See somebody just listing them. So this, that I mean, does not give a panelist enough information to gauge. Remember very well, I said earlier, that you have the necessary experience and you have the ability to make sound judgment. If that does not come out in your report, that's why you find a very difficult point. Because you remember the panelist is looking at whether this person can this person, has he acquired experience? That is number one. Has he got the maturity of judgment? That's another thing here. Then can he make sound decisions? Then at the end, if we are to allow this person to be registered, can he assume full responsibility for that? So if your own report does not address that, honestly speaking, if you have to question a report, then that is a major weakness that I've noticed in most reports. And one, one of the things I keep on telling people is that, especially people in my company who come a mentor, is that some of the reports, some of the reports I've seen. One, every graduate engineer should be able to identify a good mentor. 
that's number one somebody who has experience and the second thing in that one is that they have i request them to be meeting at least every three months regularly every quarter is good to meet and discuss on some a number of things the second thing i keep on stressing is that the graduate engineer must open a logbook or a journal to record activities and experience that is acquired as close as possible to the event now the mistake people do is that they try to write their reports three years down the line they don't write them immediately they don't have a logbook that they write things as long as it happens so trying to remember what was the experience that you learned for three years ago is always very difficult and that's why people end up writing very general lack of death reports and they find it very difficult why is the panelist very difficult on me but the report you have pre presented does not give the, the confidence that you have the experience, you can actually make sound judgment decisions. So to me, please, 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 and I always beg my engineers in Ketraco, open a logbook as soon as possible, get it updated every three months, get a way to be discussing with your mentor in terms of what, what you're supposed to do. So that is weakness number one, and to me, that is a solution. Weak number, weakness number two I always see is quite a number of engineers, not many, but a big number of them, don't follow simple instructions on preparing reports on preparation. So that's the thing. So they end up common mistakes. When the report is very clear that you're supposed to make a report because of based on a number of words, maybe a maximum of is it 3,000? I have to look at the document. Somebody prepares a document of 12,000 words or something that is too much. I mean, you, simple instructions are not being followed. There's a format and a flow of report that is given by IK, which again, some people don't follow. The number of drawings given four sample end up given a different number. Engineer, are we there? Yes, engineer, continue. I'm here. Okay, sorry. The, the number, then the issue of the getting documents certified, issues of having uh, quantities, take of sheets and abstract of the, uh, of the bill of quantities. So quite a number of people don't take time to look at these things. And always remember, Sometimes I, 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 you end up getting eight documents to look at before, the, the, before going for the panel. So you have four documents to look at. So if a document first is either too long or doesn't make any sense, it's just human. Sometimes it, it, the interest of it is becomes a big challenge in here. So always write your document from the perspective of the, of the person who is coming to interview you. Ask yourself, don't, what exactly, if I was to read this document independently, what exactly? is the person looking at. So I keep on telling people, please, my solution is this one, please read your document and understand the document quite well. And the other thing is that if you have a template you're following from somebody else, a previous report, don't blindly copy and paste from it, but think through the whole thing. So to me, that's a solution in terms of getting uh, people to follow the instructions quite well and ensure the document is, is well done as per the requirements of, of IK. Now, one of the things that uh, I wanted to propose is that uh, the part one, let it, let it, and part two again, let it, especially part two, let it follow a logical flow of information. I mean, you do your planning, you do design, your drawings and quantities. A simple, uh, whatever. so somebody reads the document, understands it from page one, and it flows all the way to the end. Uh, the other thing is that quite a number of days, nowadays we're receiving a number of these, you know, documents, design is done using computers. I keep on asking people, please, as much as possible, try to get the loadings uh, got manually in quotes. It's also good there. Then again, when the design is complete, just being able to check some of the calculations manually to sheet so that they're actually workable, so that you are not an engineer who just puts information in the, in the computer, but you're an engineer who basically can actually know whether there's an error that occurs in a computer. You know, garbage in, garbage out in a computer, it works out that way. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to stress is that Drawings have to be quite clear, and you have to have notes on the side. I've seen quite a number of people bring drawings with purely no, 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 no notes, and it becomes quite difficult to follow. So those are some, just some things I wanted to mention to get your reports done quite well. So take time, get your logbook, get your experience written quite well, then prepare for the interview. This is very important. And during the interview, I keep on telling people, please arrive in good time. It's, it's quite shocking that uh, you still get those guys who appear uh, late, I don't know how they, why they do that. You still have people who they, I, I keep on telling people, please dress smartly, but comfortable. It's, it's quite important to do that. Or the other thing is, please carry your national ID uh, or at least some form of uh, identification that your picture is actually there. Then carry your own set of documents. 
uh, it's quite important because when you enter the interview panel room, uh, you'll get the panelists, which there are three. Uh, they introduce themselves, then they ask you to introduce yourself. They, they get a chance to, 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 uh, to look at your documents, then they tell you to take them through your documents or to introduce yourself using your part one. Now, this is another weakness I've noticed in some of the engineers. Many graduate engineers are appearing in the board without going through their own document. You know, some people think that since I wrote the document, I'm, I'm aware of it. But when you tell somebody, we have 15 minutes, take us through this document, you see people fumbling and wondering what exactly to stress. And this is what I keep on, my, my proposed solutions to this weakness is that read your document before you come for the interview, even if you're the one who's read it, read, read, written it. Yes, you're the one who's written it, but read it. Then always bookmark your strengths. 15 minutes are very short time, by the way. If you're given 15 minutes to say something, you have to bookmark the areas that you, you think are of interest today, that you want to stress about who you are. Uh, and think again, what are the possible questions that can arise from, from the panelists? Then uh, my hint here is always, uh, you, you have a very good understanding of everything you wrote. So if, if you wrote that uh, I, I did site supervision, definitely we are going to ask you things about how do you put documents. You know, those things that come with site supervision. Sometimes you, somebody says they're on site, but you ask them what are the daily records that you keep on site. The guy is totally uh, lost. Uh, we ask about site instructions, how they're given. Somebody is totally uh, lost in terms of, and he's written, has done that. Somebody says uh, we terminated a contract. We want to know the process of terminating a contract. Uh, we also, the person is totally also uh, lost in terms of, of that one. Then uh, ensure that your supervisor has gone through all your documents that you need to go through. So th those are some of the hints I wanted to give. Uh, in general, we wanted to catch some drink of water. Uh, I don't know what's the schedule um, the skill that I have. Yeah, it's okay, engineer. I think uh, uh, for now I, we, I can allow you to take some uh, breather, a breather rather, and then we we start a second session with the questions and uh, everybody to participate. But one thing I would request members, because I haven't uh, stopped members from joining, uh, the thing is m many members are joining and are, they are unmuting their mics immediately. Members, when you join, your mic on the setting is that you're muted. Uh, so don't unmute your mic unnecessarily. Uh, otherwise, I'll be forced to mute everybody so that you're unable to mute for, unmute from yourself, but on your side, and then you'll be, for, it'll be, it'll be forcing me to activating everybody one at, one at a time. Otherwise, engineer, I think you can take a, a breather of five minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, kindly join after five minutes, please. Keep time and make sure your questions are, are short and clear for engineer to, to be able to articulate them very easily and fast. Eh? 